spherical aberration of the cornea happens when the marginal rays passing through the cornea are over refracted or under refracted than the paraxial rays or the rays that pass close to the optical axis of cornea. How much of light passing through the cornea or a lens will bend is dictated by the Snell's law and the refractive indices of the medium that light is traveling through. In this case, the light is traveling through the air and cornea, whose refractive indices are 1.0 and 1.376 respectively. Snell's law states that for a given pair of medium, the angle of incidence of light and its refraction will follow a constant ratio. That is the sign of the angle of incidence and the sign of the angle of refraction is constant. In this example, light is traveling from air at an angle of 25 degree to glass, which has a refractive index of 1.5. The angle of refraction is 16 degree. If we change the angle of incidence of the light ray to 20 degree, then the refracted ray pass at an angle of 13 degree. A constant ratio between the angle of incidence and angle of refraction is maintained as long as the two mediums remain the same. As light passes through the peripheral cornea, the angle of incidence increases. So does the sign of angle of refraction increase. This leads to spherical aberration. As we move from the center to the periphery, for an average cornea, light starts falling at different places, usually before the paraxial rays of light. This can lead to a drop in contrast and image quality, particularly in the mesopic or nighttime. This is because our pupil is dilated and more amount of peripheral rays of light enter the eye unobstructed and fall before the focal point. The good news is that at a young age this positive spherical aberration is often compensated by negative spherical aberration of the human natural lens. Thus the net spherical aberration of the total eye is either zero or very marginally positive giving a better contrast and image quality. As we age, the ability of the lens to negate the positive spherical aberration is reversed and the natural lens starts gaining positive spherical aberration leading to a degradation in image quality, particularly in low light situations. Thus, the total eye spherical aberration starts becoming increasingly positive. The cornea can be prolate, oblate or spherical in shape. A prolate cornea is one where the center is steep while the periphery is flat. Such corneas have negative spherical aberration, typical of keratoconus patients who have highly prolate cornea. A hyperopiclastic patient may have a prolate cornea as the ablation is done in the periphery making the center steep. An oblate cornea is one where the center is flatter than the periphery. Such cornea will have more positive spherical aberration as the peripheral steep curvature of the cornea will over refract the marginal ray. The prolate or oblate cornea is identified in corneal topography by the shape factor or Q factor. Going forward with this series, we will talk more about Q factor and the choice of lenses. Keep following quickguide.org.